Hello everyone, he is Arik Kogut from way 2 gen Today with me are our famous, fabulous and great coaches, Anna uh, Lafold, previously Trichta, now Lafold, hey. uh, Ronny Kuba Hello. from Slovakia, our uh, new international coach, and Christian Piluk, Hello. a very experienced coach from, from Poland. And today we're going to talk about how to combine your work with high-level training. So I would mean this would be for everyone who have who has uh, his or her own company, spends a lot of time in work, has family, education, other duties, and wants to combine it with high-level training. So I would say anywhere around uh, eight, 10 hours, maybe above. So I think that's the case for uh, many people who are watching us. So we want to first talk with Ronnie, who is our new coach, and this is the idea how we got into that, so that Ronnie has his own company and combines also his working with high-level training. So 50 hours, sometimes even 20 hours. Start to tell us how do you how do you combine it? How does it work in everyday life? Well, I have been tweaking my schedule uh, over the years. Well, basically the past years that I'm doing uh, structured training. The most important thing for me is now to have a firm schedule. So usually uh, when I do my uh, training, I, I, within the day I put the training first as the most important uh, part. Because I have a, my own business, I can afford to do that, of course, with other types of employment. It's, uh, it's not so convenient or easy to do, but I, uh, I'm lucky enough to have it this way. So usually I do my training, particularly if it's, if it's a hard one, uh, around, well, just after lunch from 1 p.m. usually. And then also in the weekends, in the morning, there I have uh, longer sessions, which I start early around 10, 11, and then basically I have the whole day. So as I said, I can uh, afford to do that. And uh, the main reason that enables me to do this is that I have a preset plan. You know, a lot of people uh, that just cycle and uh, do uh, other sports around that work uh, are doing the mistake. Uh, in what, what I see is a mistake is that they don't have preset goals and then it's kind of hard to uh, combine the two because if you just work, work, work and you don't have on your mind that I need to do a two and a half hour workout today. Then you just uh, end up training the amount of what is left over in the day, or it goes the other way around that you just train a little bit, for example, an hour or so. So then you have time for the rest of your activities. So for me, this was the most important thing that I need to realize. And this, uh, has enabled me to be relatively stress-free regarding this time crunch, shall I say. Uh, so I always work out at the same part of the day. It's, it's the main priority. And then I uh, schedule my other activities around that. So usually I work, I get up quite early around 5, 6, then I work until around 12. Then I have lunch and then I do my training. And when I come back and I'm fresh enough, I can do some office, office work, for example, that's not too demanding. Uh, it's also not ideal because you should be resting. Of course, that's the best case scenario, but sometimes I just can't afford to do that time-wise. But uh, yeah, definitely having Arek over the last two years has helped me a lot in this. So I can, I have also learned and created habits thanks to this that enabled, to, enabled me to manage my time and Basically, I got to a point where I never really have to skip a training session because of work and how I organize it. So yeah, I think summing it up, uh, this, this is what you need to do if you want to be successful. And then also if, if you have this training part covered, then you can also focus more on, on the business side of things. So if you know that uh, you ne need to or you will have this amount of hours that you can work, then you can schedule accordingly. So actually it's a win-win situation because you can better manage uh, both things. Or at least this is my experience, or it has been so far. 
So as, uh, as to sum up it uh, a little, I think also from my experience of working with my clients, it's working like this, but if you reschedule everything like the business, uh, the training, and you have that in mind, as you said, uh, then the time which you can train, you will find that, yeah? Because otherwise, if you just say, okay, so I will train this week sometimes, somewhere, and somehow. Yeah, so that it has not been that, that you go for the training like, you know, one or two times for maximum, uh, and you don't see the progress, you are frustrated and stuff like this. And the help of coach um, here is, I think, inevitable, yeah? And uh, you can you can say yeah from your experience as a pro athlete and uh, like now also a coach who is working with others and have other duties also but it's uh, quite important to have priorities, isn't that? Yeah, it is. But actually, uh, according to what Rona was saying, I have to say that actually having a good plan is the base of everything. And also looking in the past when I used to be a student and I still. I was already racing in the national international level. I have to say that I had like a huge notebook where I was writing every day the daily schedule. And I remember I was like waking up at six in the morning and I had 10 minutes to have breakfast and five minutes to get to the train, going to the hospital to do some practice. And then in between hospital and the university, I had maybe two or three hours for training. And everything like every day was counted, like every minute was exactly planned for something, for the activity. But it was working really good for me this way for three years. And also I didn't miss any training. So I have to say that having a good planner of the day, of the week, uh, being prepared that, yeah, it will be busy. But at the same time, you don't waste your time for other things. Like now we have so many distractions. Like it's easy to waste time on social media. And sometimes by the end of the day, you realize, oh, gosh, I lost like two hours of the day today being on my phone for nothing. But actually, when you are so organized and very busy, it's just like, yeah, you don't have time to waste these minutes for something that is not necessary that day. And it's easier to stay focused. And also now I see it with my riders when they are having own companies, when they are working and they don't have that much time for training. They have to be organized, but they don't skip the efforts. They don't skip the workouts. They do everything 100 percent because they have the training program for one week prepared. It's also based on uh, the time schedule that they have. We always discuss before I make the training program and we decide like which days they are more busy, which days they cannot train. And then we make it the way that it's possible to do. And I think it's easier for them to be ready and, and to do the training as it's planned. I think Arik has some connection problems. Yeah, like right now I am back. Yeah, hello. <laughs> yeah, so uh, according to what Dania said, I see this also in my life and when I am working with athletes, uh, that actually uh, when you don't have those distractors, even I had turned off my Facebook wall, there are some plugins uh, and YouTube wall and also delete the, the Facebook from the from the phone. Now I can see that I have little more time which I can use for uh, for the training or the business work and stuff like this. But also the, the thing that uh, it is important for you at the first place to have that workout and have the training. This is the something which drives you during the day and during your business uh, hours. Yeah, Christian, maybe you can relate to that because you also have your own company and you train quite a lot. Yeah, also yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I did train a little bit more before uh, when I was racing. I don't race since uh, two years, uh, but usually I uh, the plan was the the base. The, 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 that was the most important what what I could do. Uh, it always was like this that I would try to uh, put everything uh, what is the most important on the front uh, of the day. So most of the time I was uh, training in the morning. I get up in the morning, okay, make a training and then start work at 10 uh, and then stay stay focused uh, at work uh, from 10, I don't know, to 6 or to 5 p.m. But I tried to, in the week time, uh, from Monday to uh, Friday, I try to uh, work do the workouts in the morning. Uh, then, of course, uh, make the longer session on the weekends. 
And this way, I think you can easily make like uh, 10, 12 hours uh, workouts uh, a week. Of course, if uh, then later on we have, a, uh, we have a summer, then I try to start work earlier in the morning and then finish, uh, finish work at, le let's say, 3. And after 3, do some longer workouts also and stronger workouts uh, in the week time. Then of course it's it's uh, it's a little bit different. So it depends if if I work if I work in the uh, winter or if I uh, train in the summer. Then I uh, put my schedule a little bit different. But I think uh, the plan is the most important. The the schedule you have on the uh, Monday and then you can prepare all the week uh, according to what you have to do in the work. Because most of us, uh, they have some business or they work somewhere. Uh, and uh, we are not uh, professional athletes. So we do the training or we do cycling as a side uh, side uh, fun yeah, for side us. Fun. Yeah. So it's something what we do for ourselves. So I think uh, the most important is to put job on the front. If you are not a professional cyclist, uh, put the job on the front and then put uh, your uh, passion on the side and uh, try to combine it all together that it works. I think with working and training like uh, 10 to 12 hours a week, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think also it, it boosts with, with my experience as, uh, as a business owner and also our clients, who most of them are professional men and women who, who are working somewhere or having their own uh, companies, but it's uh, let's say combining with each other, yeah. But when you are training and you have those workouts prescribed and you see your progress, uh, actually you have more energy to focus on your uh, business also, and you and you want that, yeah, because you know that you want to do the training also. So you have to focus right now, do the job in your business, and you don't waste that time, yeah, for having a coffee here and there, a small talk here and there, uh, little on Slack, little on WhatsApp, little on Facebook, and then three hours uh, had gone by, yeah, but you make the, the list, like, I have the list, something like this, yeah, for the day, and I am checking it off, and uh, I am I am seeing what kind of tasks I have to do, because I have the training in the afternoon, even if it's one hour, I have to be very focused and not distracted to make uh, all happen, yeah, uh, and is that your experience, Ronnie, also, as, as you, as a business owner, have? Huh? Well, uh, as I said in the beginning, I think developing these habits uh, is, is the key of all of this. And I agree totally with what you are saying. In my case, uh, my business is also related to bikes. So uh, I have maybe have that even more connected than other people. So really the motivation, um, you know, I install a new bike part and I'm happy to go training because and r ride or I have, I'm getting the new bikes now uh, for the new season. It's, uh, it's really connected and it also affects other aspects of your life. But yeah, the developing these habits and the scheduling and the planning, that's certainly the, the key of all of this. And at first I was not very good at it. I had times when I was working, 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 then I realized that I was always uh, counting the time left that I still have daylight so if I can finish my uh, training by then, sometimes I didn't, and I had a split session, you know, on the bike, then on the trainer, and it, it was not working very well. And then I decided that I need to have a firm place for my training, and I do, and I schedule that so I, I can, because work, uh, the way I work, I can do it at any time. It doesn't matter if it's five or six in the morning or if it's seven or eight in the evening, the work will wait. Uh, if I do it on schedule, of course, I'm not talking about you know, postponing it constantly. That's, that's uh, not, a, not a good way to do things. But yeah, after I uh, did this, I had a lot less stress. I, my mood was better and my training was better also. So it's, it's kind of a self-reaffirming uh, cycle, really. So yeah, definitely need, uh, need to pay attention to that. And of course, it takes time, I would say. I'm still making changes and improvements after two, uh, two plus almost three years now. And uh, the other thing that also I keep in mind when doing my schedule, as Christian already touched on the topic, 
uh, the weather and well the time of year can also affect things quite a bit so uh, in these colder months I usually tend to schedule my training uh, to the warmest part of the day just to make it you know in the winter when it's not freezing at least and now also so that also takes it a bit less demanding mentally and then you're fresher for other things so I think if someone uh, has the option to do that then definitely it's an important thing and just little things uh, in terms of organization that can make your life easier for example we mentioned long we uh, weekend rides and particularly in these changing seasons I find that sometimes it's quite problematic because uh, at 7 in the morning it's freezing and then at 11 it's 10 degrees so if you start at 7 in the morning then how do you dress you know it's little things like this and it makes makes it a whole lot more complicated so I just shifted so that I start at 11 until 4 or 5 p.m. when the temperature is more or less constant and then I don't have to worry about you know changing my clothes or doing extra layers and stuff like that so yeah I postpone it I can do other things in the meantime until I start and then it takes me less time overall and also indoor training that's also I think why it's very popular these days because it takes the weather and the sunlight equation completely out so it's also a simplification even though uh, I don't really like to do that uh, too much because I live in a climate where we can ride basically all year so yeah I find that more effective but if you're constrained by time then definitely indoors is a good option for most people so yeah I think this yeah I good. have also some some clients you know from big uh, cities in the world like let's say London, Mumbai, uh, Sydney and stuff like this so they are using indoors also during the season even in, in Warsaw or big cities in Poland because going out of the center of the city uh, to the place where you can do training actually is taking you one one and a half hours both ways yeah and you cannot do the structured workout uh, in the time because you are going through the uh, crossroads through, through cycling paths and the stuff so actually indoors is a good solution but also i wanted to make it a little side topic about nutrition so we are combining the the work at high level the training at high level we are taking care of our families. Maybe, uh, Anya, do you have experience because you were also doing the, the university, the trainings and all the stuff. How about nutrition? How are you taking care of that to make sure that you are actually fueled for the, for the training and actually recovering from all, all your duty? Yeah, normally the same. I was making the schedule of the day. I was also making the schedule of what I'm going to eat and what time I'm going to eat. Because normally I knew exactly the certain time how long I will be in, at the university, what time I will be in the hospital. And then mostly I was eating actually on the way from one place to another in the train or in the bus. But always I was making the lunch boxes and I had it always with me. So I knew that, yeah, I will not snack like really unhealthy thing. I was always prepared that I have something healthy, fueling that I will need actually to do my effort and be ready for training after and I think it's a good system and that's also very important. Like without the fuel, you cannot do a good training. And I think it's also something we should really focus on that. Yeah, it's not only about training, also recovering is important, the same as eating. And I think when we combine all this together, then it works properly for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last thing what I, what I remember right now about the, the note which I had done before, so when we are about over 40 years old, let's say, like uh, Christian is the case, and uh, you, when you were training uh, over 40, you were really strong guy. And sometimes we have the questions, what I can do if I am over 40? If I can achieve anything or it's just uh, decreasing uh, over the years, the, the performance, and combining this with a high-level job, what can you say about the progress which you can achieve by doing that over 40 years old? 
Uh, it always depends uh, if you start to train when you are 40 or you start to train when you are uh, 35. Because sometimes, okay, when you start to train when you are 30 or after 30, of course, you can get better and better uh, until you get probably 40. But sometimes if you didn't train before and you are 40 right now and then you have, uh, I, let's say, kids are already adult and you have more free time, uh, your job is already set up, so you have some more time for you. So, of course, uh, starting uh, training when you are 40, probably you will get stronger year by year. It's not uh, mentioned that, okay, you are already 40 and you're not going to get better. I think you can be better. Of course, if you start a little bit earlier, then I think after 40, uh, our body doesn't recover so fast. So uh, you can only maintain to keep uh, your high level. But if you start when you are 40, I think you can get better, 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 probably because the base is low. Yeah, I think it's an important topic that you talked about with, uh, recovery also. Yeah, but the proper help of the coach uh, also addresses that. Yeah, because normally when you are high achiever, yeah, you want to perform well at, at the job, at the training, at the family and all your duties. Sometimes you forget about that recovery or the importance of that. And the coach is the uh, one who is uh, remembering about the, this. Yeah. Now, now see, we have the... We have made the job, now you have to recover. Yeah. And normally if you train alone, it's oh, okay, maybe I have trained something, but I will go to push something more and something more and something more. And actually after a few months we can find ourselves over trained, yeah. Or burnout. Or yeah, burnout. I think yes. yeah, I, I think it's really important. Uh, that's why the coach helps you. Uh, not only to put the uh, efforts, uh, what you have to do, have to do on the training, but also uh, give you some uh, recovery uh, or uh, information when you supposed to recover. Because I think, uh, especially after 40, the recovery is as much important as the train. Yes. So you cannot uh, be overloaded. Uh, it's not the years. Uh, your body is not recovering so fast. Probably uh, after 40, you don't sleep so long. So if you don't sleep, you don't get recover as well. So it all 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 coming all to the one point that, sorry, you need you should have somebody over you uh, to take over, uh, or to, who think for you uh, how long you should train and how long you should get recovery. Yes, and I think that yeah, the, the last one what I right now remember uh, Ronnie, because you right now you have a very good knowledge yeah, about cycling about training. Why do you use uh, services of coach and why you can advise others to do that, uh, despite the fact that they are already really knowledgeable about training? Well, for me, uh, it's, I think, th uh, three things. So the first thing is accountability. So if I have something scheduled out by someone, then I find it a lot more important to stick to that because it's simply, it may sound stupid, but, you know, what do I think? If I skip this workout, what will Arek think, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's that factor. Um, the second thing is objectivity, because uh, it might be hard for someone to evaluate themselves. There will also always be some kind of uh, bias in that. So if you take outsource that to another person, then it's, it can't happen because uh, they oversee many people, how they progress and what the general level is. Um, and, uh, and you stick to that and then you have objective numbers. Where I live, there are not many cyclists, but, um, you know, everyone thinks they're the fastest because they're the fastest in their town. You know, but they don't have power meters, they don't have other uh, things to, to compare to. So they're living this kind of delusion and <laughs> so they can't really progress because they don't have the input to do so. So that's the other thing. And uh, the third thing uh, is motivation, I would say, because it's, uh, it's a bit of an um, alignment with the first point I said, but uh, something more in the sense that if you plan something together, 
and you achieve that, it gives you a greater sense of accomplishment and also more motivation to for the for the further progress. So I would sum it up like this. And also uh, the last thing, probably one more, is it just it's time of your mind really mm, you don't have to think about it again it's outsourcing basically you you get the plan and you know what to do and you don't need to really uh, think about why and how and and what you just have that and you just need to plan on when and how you do it so it makes it simpler yeah and and also it's uh, it, you know when something goes wrong you have someone to uh, be about <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are people who, who like to blame put the blame on others but yeah it can, can, can also be the yeah, that's, a, that's a joke but actually when cycling and uh, actually performance is important to you it's also taking um, the thinking about this out of equation and out of your uh, life so actually it making it a little easier so this is actually what what we are doing and uh, thank you today for, for our uh, video podcast. Thank you, Anya. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Christian. And thank you. Thank, thank you, all of you who, who are watching us. Uh, and below the video, you will find the link to fill our survey. And uh, our guys will contact you and talk absolutely for free where you are right now, where we can take you, and if something we are offering is suitable for you or not. Uh, so I advise you to do that. Uh, thank you for today and see you next time. Thank you. Bye thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.